I had one career goal from the beginning. I wanted to be a professor. I wanted to be an academic. I interviewed only at academic positions. That's the only thing I considered because I had a love of teaching that began when I was an undergraduate, but was really nurtured during my time at Stony Brook. And I really grew my interest in, in doing research. So from the beginning, that's what I wanted to do. And I ended up interviewing only at academic positions and eventually coming to Stanford. John Hennessy graduated Stony Brook University in 1977 with a PhD in computer science, launching a prestigious career in academia and a lifelong commitment to advancing technology and excellence in education. John attended Stony Brook University after receiving a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from Villanova University. From the neighboring town of Huntington, he returned to his native Long Island to continue his studies. He fondly remembers his Stony Brook roots and credits the young but emerging Department of Computer Science for nurturing his fascination with technology and preparing him for his academic career. So I went to Stony Brook to pursue my PhD because I really wanted to be an academic and that's where I thought I would spend my life. And I got a simply spectacular education um, which nurtured my love of the discipline. Stony Brook also gave me financial aid. So, and at that time, it was a, a, an absolutely terrific and rising computer science department. So it was a great place to be. And then I think the other thing that for me, which made a big difference was the collaboration and working with my fellow graduate students. Upon graduation, he joined the faculty at Stanford University as an assistant professor of electrical engineering. Early in his career, he was instrumental in the development of a new technology known as Reduced Instruction Set Computer, a game changer in computing that increased performance while reducing costs. He founded a startup and helped transfer risk to the commercial market. Well, what I find fascinating about um, technology and engineering are, are two things. First of all, there's always something new happening. There's always, it's a very dynamic, changing field. Right now, the rise of artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, self-driving cars. The other thing I love about engineering is it's a field that goes out and changes the world. It's about solving the problems that we have as people. And so its ability to, to have this applicability to immediately be able to, to transform the world is something that I find attractive but his true calling was teaching. Stanford was the very last job offer I got, so there were lots of other places I almost ended up on. And I think actually I would have been perfectly happy because I've loved being, being a professor, I've loved teaching, I love working with students, I love doing research. So I could have been very happy doing that. I never imagined that I would either start a company or that I would move into academic administration. Both were not things that I had any idea of uh, as I went along. At Stanford, John rose to full professorship of electrical engineering and computer science. He was appointed chair of the Department of Computer Science and then dean of the School of Engineering. He became provost, and in 2000, John Hennessy was inaugurated as Stanford University's 10th president. Throughout his career, John has fostered interdisciplinary collaborations, initially in biosciences and bioengineering, and now among 18 interdisciplinary centers at Stanford. During his 16-year presidency, he oversaw a physical transformation of the Stanford campus to support 21st century research and teaching needs. But education is about more than buildings. Universities are about the people in the university. We have great buildings, it's great camps to walk around on, Stony Brook has great buildings, but in the end universities are about the people. And so I think the most important thing for me is, are we getting and supporting the very best students we can? Are we recruiting the very best faculty, both for research and teaching? And that's the thing I think that I always focused on is most important. Consistent with his Stony Brook experience, providing accessible and affordable education are among his highest priorities. In fact, during his presidency, Stanford's financial aid program became one of the strongest in the nation. You know, I've had the opportunity to work with extraordinary students along the way, and they've shaped my views of the importance of things like access, 
Uh, early on, I had a student who had grown up in a family that were migrant farm workers. She hadn't been in any one high school for more than three months at a time. And yet, she managed to do well enough to get into Stanford. The fact that, that we had a financial aid program that could make it possible for her to attend, that really affected my views of the importance of access and, and access and getting students from all backgrounds to come. Today, John continues his pursuit of accessibility and excellence in education. In 2016, he co-founded the Knight Hennessy Scholars Program, offering full funding to 100 high-achieving students from around the world for a graduate education at Stanford. It is the largest fully endowed scholars program in the world. Well, I think right now, um, the starting up the Knight Hennessy program is keeping me very busy. I've gone from running a very large university with tens of thousands of students and, and employees to a small startup team of eight or ten who works really well together and hard together to try to recruit this next generation of students and, and provide a great opportunity for them. A passion to innovate, a true calling to teach and serve others, a lifelong commitment to excellence in technology and education. John Hennessy has lived the Stony Brook vision to look far beyond. One of my personal heroes is Abraham Lincoln, and certainly uh, everybody would point to his legacy of ending slavery and saving the Union by ending the Civil War. And they forget about the fact that he's the one that signed the Homestead Act, that signed the Land Grant College Act, and that signed the Transcontinental Railroad Act, all of which changed our world and certainly changed the West. And any time I get a little uh, depressed about the state of the world or the challenges we have, I look at the next generation and I see the energy and commitment and their ability to focus on doing better in the world. And that gives me optimism about the future.